Hello friends and welcome to this knitting tutorial on how to make this reversible camouflage hat using a knitting machine. At the top I'll show you how to sh finish it with a woven inner piece so you don't have as much gathering around here. Let me show you what it looks like for the other side so that if you choose to have just a plain solid color with the orange in it, you can. So, come join me and I'm going to show you how I made the first one, had an error, fixed it, <laughs> and then made the second one. So, let's get started. Right now. First, I wanted to show you my setup. You see my table here? Oh, it has two holes in the center and it has some nice long legs. I use these to keep my two knitting machines on. They're also attached using the command strips that are uh, easy to remove if I need to. This machine here is the 40 needle. This one is the 48 needle and it has a nice opening on both of them for if I make a scarf or something like that. You want to know what it is? <laughs> it's a dog dish for a uh, holder for large dogs. I'll put a picture up here to show you what it is. The needles that I use, one is just a large eye tapestry needle. The other one you see here has a plastic loop. These are called wool yarns. I cannot find them in the store, but I bought mine off of Amazon and I will put the link in the description box. These are my weighted clips that I use. I bought them at the dollar store. They come three to a pack. One's kitties and one's uh, puppy dogs. The yarn that we're using to make this hat today, you can tell Red Heart is my favorite yarn. I have a room full of Red Heart yarn. <laughs> this one is orange, this one's a green, and this is camouflage. Now the green, if you want the specific color, is medium time, and the orange for this specific color is called pumpkin. Right, you notice here that the counter is at zero, but right now it really doesn't matter because we're going to cast on. What I'd like to do is to make sure that I have yarn already pulled out and ready to go because you want to make sure that the tension is loose when doing a cast on. Now, you might have witnessed other people's ways of doing things. I do things a little bit different. So I'm going to start off with a tail that's about 12 inches. Okay, I'm going to go in front of the first hook and behind the next. Front of the first, behind the next. And slowly crank as you're loading this on. I don't know if you can see this because of the angle of the camera. So I'm going to go behind, and then the next needle that comes up, I go in front, and then go behind the next needle, not these things here, the needle, and you'll do that all the way around. Be slow and take your time. I've had it before where I lost 
concentration and I had to redo it. Okay, so your last one before your white one will be where you're ready to feed it into the machine. So make sure it clip, clips down and of the three holes, we're using the middle one. Okay, and I'm gonna pull some yarn out. And slowly go around for the first row. When the white needle pops up, it's already counted, but we're going to place ours on zero because this is the initial cast on row. Now we're going to keep on going for 27 rows and then we'll change color. Now as we do this, you always want to watch the needles right here. Make sure that the yarn is on the other side of these two prongs. Take your time. I know that there's those fast um, things that you can put on to make it spin really fast, but to be honest with you, these are designed for plastic. They are considered a toy, not really machinery. So you want to make sure that you don't overstress the machine. Now, if in the video you see it speed up, I will mention that I'm speeding it up. But keep on going until our number here says 27. When I get close to row 10, I'll be adding my weights of my little kitty cats and dogs. The nice thing about this dog stand, or the dog dish stand, is that it's high enough that I can sit in a regular chair and not have to perch it up on something. With it sitting on the carpet, it also rocks back and forth as I turn the crank, which seems to help take some stress off the machine. Maybe it's just a coincidence, not really sure. So we've just hit 10 rows. After the completion of 10 rows, I'm gonna add my clips. Okay, so we've completed 10. It's nice to have a smiley face staring back at me. These are actually potato tip, potato chip clips. So you can find them at the Dollar Tree in the food section. And let's continue on until we have 27 rows.
We have completed 27 rows. So we're going to take our yarn, leave a short tail, wrap it around the first one, and drop it into the center. I'm going to pick up my orange yarn. just a short tail, drop it in the center, and turn it so that the, the opening here is between the two needles. And then place it into the medium. I'm going to pinch and turn a couple of stitches. After I turned a couple of stitches, I'm going to place an overhand knot just to hold it in place. And then I'm going to place five rows of orange onto our hat. So here we're at number one. Number two. Number three. Number four. And this is row five. And of course you want to go all the way around until you start the beginning of row six. Okay, so here's our white needle again. Let's go ahead and cut our yarn. Place it into the center. I'm going to pull up my camouflage again. Just a short tail. Put it into the channel there. And drop it in the center. And pinch the two yarns and crank around a couple of stitches and then place the overhand knot in it again. I'm gonna stay with the camouflage until we have 45 rows. Right now we're at row 33. We've completed 45 rows. This needle here is about ready to click on row 46. We're going to make our hat reversible 
So I'm going to change from camo to green. So I've cut my yarn and I'm bringing in my green. Just a short tail to begin with. Remember to hold as it makes the first mm, five or six stitches and then place an overhand knot. Now, you can either make this a, the full solid color, or you can add orange. I'm going to add two rows of orange, um, of two rows each, or three rows and two rows, just to add a little difference to the camouflage on the opposite side. So, let's go up to row... Uh, 55 and then we'll change our color to orange So here, even though the, the clicker says 56, I'm actually at the end of row 55. So I'm going to go ahead and cut my yarn and place orange in between, whoops, in between the two needles. And then pinch the two and start the stitching. Place our overhand knot in it. That'll help with sizing. And count your rows. We're going to do three rows of orange. So here's row one. This is the beginning of row two. And this is row three. Okay, and then we're going to change our color to green. Don't forget to pinch your ends. I also wanted to point out, I noticed that this thing is rocking back and forth as it's filming. Watching this video is probably going to make you feel like you're seasick. <laughs> but actually sitting here filming, uh, to creating this hat, it's not um, a bother to me. So hopefully this video is not that disturbing. Okay, so we're going to do five rows of green. Here we're starting on row one.
Row two. Okay, so we had an error right here. Let's see what's going on. All right, the green didn't go over. So let's see if we can help the green to go over. And then put the one right here with the needles. There we go. Oh my goodness, what happened here? I just lost a whole bunch of stitches. Well, I guess I'm gonna have to start over again because I'm not that good at placing it back up on the needles. That was a good try. I'm showing you that because of my error, I am taking it apart and I am separating the yarns so that I can reuse them. So I'll meet back up with you at uh, row 55 and we'll start on our video again. I mean, this happens, so I want to show you that this sort of stuff happens. Please be patient with it. It's, it's a mechanical tool and it's a toy. So sometimes it loves the yarn and sometimes it don't so like i said oops be patient with it and everything will be fine i'll see you in a few minutes once i fix this back up all right so i am back at where i left you at so we're going to do five rows of the green i got one more row to do and then we'll do uh, two rows of the orange. Okay, and that's where I stopped and started at because of my yarn placement when I had to restart. Eh, I left that in there in this video because I wanted you to see that even while making these things, you want to make sure that your knitting is proper. You don't want it to have loose stitches all over the place. And like I said, you have to be watching through here. I wasn't watching. I took my eyes off to see how I use my camera. I don't know if it'll show you. See my camera as my viewer and I wasn't paying attention here and I lost. It wasn't the yarn's fault. There was no knot, no nothing in it. It was my fault. So, you know, you want to pay attention to this. Okay, so we did one complete row of orange. We're on the second row. Okay, and I'm going to stop there and change it back to green and I'm going to continue with the green until we have 92 rows. If you want to include those two extra rows on your cast on. So keep on going until your counter hits 92 and I'll meet you there.
So after we reached our number of rows that we wanted, we want to stop at the white peg. I would like for you to pull out enough yarn, mm, I'd say about three feet. If you're wondering what this excess amount is for, it's for the weaving that we're going to do at the end. I do my hats a little bit differently than a lot of other people do. So leave a short tail here, probably about mm, four inches. Take your machine and crank it around with no yarn to where the, the white needle is about let me see if we can get that in there. About 10 stitches over, okay? And then with our little short tail, gonna fold that yarn in half. And then get the needle with the, the nylon in it. And go ahead and thread it through the eye, okay? Let me adjust it again. Okay, so our first, our end right here, we want to go. Let me see if I can bring it over there. The yarn stops here, so we want to go to the left and pick up that first loop. Place your finger over the next set so that it doesn't come off of those two little pegs. And then just start picking up stitches. You'll find that this needle here goes through a lot better than the one with the eye on it. This plastic helps make it so it's not wider than what the yarn is. So as you can pick up more stitches, then you can pick up and see how easily it glides right through. And it's also narrow enough so that it doesn't put any stress. You see how the needle fits right in there? And it puts no stress on those pins in the center. So after we've picked up those stitches, let's crank it around some more and pick up some more. We're going to do this all the way around. Being careful when you get to the last few stitches because that last one can slip off. As we pull it up, you see my guys are still attached. This is not the look of the hat, this is the knit. I'll show you what to do here in just a second. So we're going to work some magic here. 
take the two ends and take our little stretch, our little weights here and pull and you can see our pattern emerge. Okay, remember this is a reversible hat. So where the, the line changes is usually um, where we're gonna have our fold at for our beanie. Okay. Now, next thing we're gonna do is take all of our stitch markers off and turn it, or not stitch markers, our stitch weights, <laughs> and turn it inside out so that we can tie our knots here. All right, so when you start to tie, you want to snug it up just a little bit, not tight, and then just do a square knot. I usually do two or three. And then when you cut it, cut it with about an inch length. Go ahead and do that to all of your um, tie-ins and we'll continue on. Yeah, that's the ice cream man outside you here. Middle of October, he's still selling ice cream. It's really good too, by the way. It's a soft serve with butterscotch and caramel. And it's really good. <laughs> okay, so all of these colors that we joined, make sure that they're all tied in. Okay, and then we're going to turn it inside out again. All right, the one that we ended with, the green, put that to one side. Let's go back to the camo side. And we're going to take that tail and pull. You're going to find all your stitches are going to gather up around this. And we are going to weave in to finalize the opening here. So pull it till it's about the size of a quarter. Okay. Then we're going to take our yarn and double it. And then we're going to get our metal tapestry needle okay so we want to secure the size of the hole that we're making here so wrap it around twice Now we're going to start a weaving pattern. Let me get a piece of paper so I can show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so we have our hole like this. And we finished right here. So what you want to do is take the needle and come up here. Then go across and have the needle come up over here. 
go across the needle here, and then come back here. So you'll have one, two, three, four lines like that. So that's what that's what we're going to do. Oh, am I out of camera range again? <laughs> so right here, go across, go across, and make sure it's the size that you need for the opening. Because after we do that, we're going to come over a couple of stitches, and then we're going to weave up and down these stitches and come through here, and then go back and go weave up and down and then weave up and down and if that fills it in or if you need one more row then we'll do that so you'll have and that'll fill in our hole so let me show you how to do that on the, the hat itself now I have my arm up on the inside just for this side and so now I'm going to come across, I'm going to take that little piece and put that on the inside. And I'm going to come across, and just pick up, and then we're going to come across, pick up, and go across. Okay, and then your last one, you're going to pick up and go around a couple of stitches here. All right, so we have four lines. Let me see, where are we at? Right here. Okay, so we're going to go over, under, over, under, and then come across. Even if it's under, it's okay. Pull it through. And then we're going to go over this one, under that one, over this one, under that one, and pick up right here on the other side. And then pull it across. And then we're going to go Let's see, over, under, over, under. Okay, and we have a little opening right here, so I'm going to do it one more time. And that'll close it up. So we have a nice little weave. Remember, what they heard is called darning. Well, that's basically what we're doing. We're darning the whole clothes. So I'm going to take this and go around the loops. I'm going to pull it through. Stretch it out so it's not too much. Then go over one and go back the same way you came. This will be weaving it in, so our end will not come undone. Okay, and then go over one, go back through the same area, and then we can cut our yarn. Okay, and that closes up our hole right here. So let's do the other side. Now before you start to do the other side, find about halfway and take the hat and pull it through. Because basically we're folding it in half, so we're bringing wrong sides together. Let's see, where are we at here? There we go. We're bringing wrong sides together. So we're going to have a fold line at the color change. Okay. Then we'll take the double string here. 
and pull. Make sure you don't pull that one out. Okay, make sure so that your hole is about the size of a quarter. Use that little piece to tie it. Okay, and then take the little short end and just stick it inside the hat. And then do your weave pattern right here and your hat will be completed. I'm gonna go ahead and do mine and I'll show you what mine looks like when it's done. All right, so here's mine, it's done. Now, we want to join, see we have this one that can still come out, all right? So we want to join those two hats. So make sure that when you stick your hand in there, everything is smooth, there's no twisting or anything. Then, with our green, line up your two weave areas with the green. Go ahead and go down and find this area where the, the gathering of the loops on that one thread and pick up a couple of pieces of that and pull it through. Okay, and then go over a couple of stitches and go down and find the next area. You just wanna pick up a couple of, of loops it's not like you're trying to sew it down to it. You're just trying to tack it down. So. Oops. Okay, so you can see mine is not going to come out. Okay. Then, to finish off our stitch, we're going to go through the loops like we did on the other row. We're going to go over one and go back through the same area. Usually a weave of three helps. Remember to stretch it out some. And then go over one and I am done. Let's see if I can cut left handed. Okay, so here's the front side of my hat and the reversible side. Fun, isn't it? I'm going to show you some of the other hats I've been making. Um, also, too, we're going to pull these out and make them so that they, the knits are all the same length. Okay, I'm going to show you some of the other ones I've been making. Hope you get inspired by this. So here is some, all of them are reversed. This one's one of my favorites. It's got the variegated on one side 
and then the solid on the other. I have another camo one. I have an orange one. It's kind of a reversible, just change the placement. I have a black one, black on the inside. The solid black actually looks like a sailor's beanie. This is from uh, Red Heart, what's it called? I think it's called Color Block. And I decided to do a solid on the other side. This is another one of my favorites. I put the Fiesta, Red Heart Fiesta, and I think this is Mexicana from Red Heart, and it's a solid on the inside. And some of these I were trying to understand how to play with the color. But like I said, if you if you want a solid, whatever mood you're in, here's a pink with uh, baby colors in it. It's a pink on the inside. Here's another one of the color blocks. Now this one, I made a scarf to go with it, just like this one over here. So here's the scarf, I haven't finished it yet. And it has the rose of purple in it. Here's some, a blue color. So I've been trying to understand these machines. This is a color block one where I didn't have to change the colors at all. And I have a whole stack. Here's white and pink, white with these other colors, another, um, it's called Black Tweed. I also found too that the Premier Yarns that the Dollar Tree sells is really good. This is really nice. I like the colors in this. And then here's just some purple ones. And here's one I was trying out where I made a head warmer to go with the hat. And here's one, it's called Pink Camo. That's by Red Heart as well. So, I hope you've enjoyed the opportunity that I had to give you uh, making all these hats. And I hope you try using the machine and be patient with it. Took me a few tries to make sure I got the coloring and everything right. So, till next time, bye-bye.